Hi, I'm Corbett Smith with the Dallas Morning News, sitting alongside Matt Wicks and my colleague, esteemed Matt Wicks. Hi, Matt. Oh, very nice. We are here to talk a little bit about last week's action in week one, and then focus on week two. We've got some, a lot of good games this week in 6A. Matt, when you talk about some high-profile action, it doesn't get any better than week one in Class 6A last year. You had all of the heavy hitters really facing off either against each other or, in Trinity's case, facing the number one ranked team in the nation. Yeah, we can always think that nobody wants to play these teams, so we get these great games. And uh, yeah, it started off, I mean, Allen and Denton Geyer. Allen showed that they know Kyler Murray, but they are still very good. The defense is fantastic. That was Friday night. And then we go into Saturday, you got Arlington Martin and DeSoto. And once you're kind of absorbing, I guess, a shock from that, Arlington Martin beats DeSoto. Then you got Euless Trinity beating Concord de La Salle in the very, very late game, the lightning delayed game. And uh, we get good good matchups every year, but I don't think it's been any better in recent years than that first first weekend. That yeah, was phenomenal. We we'll talk about a little bit about Arlington, Martin, and DeSoto. 46-26, the number one ranked team in our area poll goes down. And DeSoto came out flat, and Martin, they looked like they just took what they had last year, had a real nice playoff run, ran into Allen, but was very competitive. You have a, a good quarterback in Eric Walker, Nick Smith, their running back, Christian Levy, their receiver. Those guys all had big games, and uh, they really held DeSoto in check, only three yards a carry uh, for DeSoto's vaunted offense. Yeah, that Martin offense has been good for a while. Those guys, what is like third year, third year. starters, that that trio. And uh, But the big thing was that defense for Martin, because d few people have been able to slow down DeSoto over the years, the last few years. And Tristan Wallace was back, Ohio State commit. Um, you know, he's healthy, and DeSoto's got lots of weapons around him, but they couldn't get much going against that Martin defense. They contained everything. They just did not give up a lot of big plays until late in the game when, it, you know, things weren't really mattering as much, or the game was out of hand in that regard. Uh, so I was just really impressed by Martin's defense. Geyer and Allen played at Allen Eagle Stadium, first game there in two years. The focus was on the quarterbacks. One, Geyer, their quarterback, Sean Robinson, considered to be one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the state for not this year but the, the 2017 class and then Allen you know they, they had a quarterback battle it looks like that battle might be a little bit more settled coming into this week Mitchell Jonke that junior uh, was phenomenal he threw for 287 yards four touchdowns ran for a touchdown as well and uh, Allen's defense no shock that they were great but they did a great job holding Sean Robinson in check yeah I think Sean Robinson is a terrific quarterback and he looked at times kind of pedestrian against that Allen defense just because it was just so hard to do things. Allen has a lot of power and speed up front. They're secondary for Allen. We don't talk about their secondary a lot because their front seven is so good. That might be the best secondary I've seen at Allen through one game, of course, uh, through the season. But, uh, you know, so on defense, Allen was great and we expected them, expected them to be. They're so experienced coming back. And then on offense, Mitchell Jonke, the quarterback who has to fill in the steps of Kyler Murray I mean, it's an impossible it gets task. very yeah. hard uh, was great and like he said you know we had talked about they're gonna do a platoon situation with uh, Seth Green the, the backup or who proved to be the backup in that game he only played one series in the first half played a little bit at the end and played pretty well but Jonke when he got out there and he got his time he showed that he had earned that position and there was a reason for him to be out there. it shows you how deep Texas high school football is when it Kid transferring from Minnesota, who's got an organ, he's an organ commit, comes to a program like Allen and has to, you know, kind of sit on the sidelines right. and wait his turn to see if he can break into the starting lineup. Uh, Euless Trinity played Concord de La Salle. Contra they're not contrasting styles. Both teams, you know, gritty smash mouth attack. Euless Trinity holds on for a 26-21 win. That game uh, finished uh, Sunday at about 12:30 <laughs> in the morning. Uh, but it was re really a phenomenal show by Trinity. They had lost a lot, only returned five starters, but two of those starters played a huge role uh, in Tyler Nati, the quarterback, and J. Ron Wilson, their running back. Yeah, and I mean, we can't overlook that their offensive line does a lot of great work up there. But Trinity, yeah, uh, Tyler Nati, the way he can sell a fake, you know, he does not going to throw a lot of passes in a game. No Trinity quarterback has right. in, in any recent memory. Uh, but the way they can, they can run J. Ron Wilson and other running backs four or five plays and gash teams and get yardage. And then he plays that little play fake and waggles to the left, throws a nice little pass, pick up 20 yards. And uh, they just, they, you know, I guess the word is methodically. They just go down and, and move down the field on you. And that game played into Trinity's strengths big time. Uh, there was another team that wanted to play like Trinity. It's early in the year. I think Trinity has better depth than De La Salle. 
And by the end of the game, there were some of those, uh, the Trinity guys run hard, but I think those De La Salle defenders were also tired and it was a little bit easier to break some of those tackles. De La Salle actually had a, a small handful of players, three or four guys who were playing both ways. And in, in week one in Texas, uh, playing against a, a team as physical as Trinity, uh, that's gonna be a tough task. But we didn't even mention Cedar Hill and Sox. Cedar right. Hill with a 40 point win against a Sox team that was explosive last year, held them to 140 yards and every piece uh, on that, uh, you know, the Cedar Hill team looked good. Avery Davis, their quarterback, new quarterback, new running back, new wide receiver, all of them did well. That's it for last week. How about this week's action, week two? I think the focus is on uh, a Friday night game. Arlington Martin, no rest for the weary. They have to face Skyline. Skyline, a big win. Uh, last week over South Grand Prairie, and uh, it, it doesn't get easy for Bob Wager. No, a, a short week preparation. They played on Saturday, and now they're going to play Skyline on Friday, and uh, it's it's another great test for for uh, Arlington Martin, and especially that defense. I want to see how they do against Skyline's running back, DeLeon Ward. Not that DeSoto doesn't have a great offense that they've already been right. challenged, but now in a short week, how do you contain that running back? Yeah, Ward averaged almost 10 yards a carry last year. Uh, really impressive. Good Thursday night game between Plano and Irving MacArthur. Plano with a really surprising win, uh, you know, as how they dominated a Tyler John right. Tyler team that made a deep run in the 5A playoffs last year. Irving MacArthur, a team that everybody kind of expected to challenge Skyline, they stubbed their toe uh, against Garland in week one. So a couple of good, good action on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday, you've got the Oak Cliff Super Bowls uh, in Sunset and Adamson and Kimball and Carter. But you also have IMG Academy from Florida, a controversial kind of prep school that is taking some of the better athletes from around the East Coast and, and Midwest and, and putting them together in a prep format. They get to face DeSoto, and I don't think anybody expected DeSoto to start the season 0-2, but they're staring that possibility in the face. Well, that's a very talented team at IMG, as you would expect. They're taking players from all across the country. But a uh, big chance for DeSoto to bounce back. I think DeSoto is a lot better than they showed against Martin. Martin, I mean, I came away from that game thinking a lot more about what Martin did than what DeSoto didn't do. DeSoto was flat. There's no doubt about it. So I think they're going to play a lot better this week. Can they beat IMG? I don't know enough about IMG Academy, but uh, I still know that DeSoto is going to be in the mix later on. I mean, they're, they're still a very scary opponent, and they're going to be in the mix for state title. We'll have a story about DeSoto and a story about uh, IMG Academy later in the week. Well, for Matt, I'm Corbett. Thanks for watching. Remember, Sports Day HS Weekly Football Podcast is on iTunes now. You can download that. And we should have a new mobile site coming up. Uh, for all those who are wondering about the app, you'll be able to use our mobile site as the app, and that should be coming out later this week. For Matt, I'm Corbett. Thanks for watching.